What's the word, y'all? A Bleach Report and Zach Buckley put together an article, one trade target for every NBA team. And, you, you know, we ain't really talked trade so far this season, so let's do that right now. Leave a like and subscribe. Let me know if you want your favorite team to target these people. I don't really like a target article. I like one where we put together the trade. You feel me? Like, I can see that they saying that either Kevin Durant needs to be targeted by Washington or Bradley Beal needs to be targeted by the Nets. I would assume it's the first one. So show me the package. Show, show me, <laughs> Paul. Show me the trade to get Kevin to Washington. Also, the NBA needs needs to uh, figure some stuff out. Yesterday we had like 13 games, and then today we got one, one, and it's not even like a like a good one. How about we divvy those up a little bit? Give me a give me seven and seven. Give me seven and seven, and I can really keep up. There's a lot of basketball I missed yesterday, and that's why we ain't got a recap. But I'm recapping right now anyway let's get it the atlanta hawks should target jay crowder yeah this makes a lot of sense i think um just because john collins needs to be moved to his next spot and jay crowder i think would help that team hit their next step obviously jay crowder is not an all-star caliber talent he's just a really good starter who hasn't played basketball in a long time so <laughs> we'll see if he is still a really good starter um but i would i would trade for jay crowder if i'm the atlanta hawks the boston celtics bismack biombo um, I'm, I'm guessing, yeah, they're talking about the depth in the front court. This is kind of a wash to me. The Boston Celtics are playing such good basketball. I don't even, I don't even care. I'll rather wait to see who ends up on the buyout market if I'm the Celtics than trade away something to get Bismack Biombo. And maybe that's what they're saying. Is Busy going to get bought out? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Just because when DeAndre Aiden was gone, Busy was playing good basketball. So I'm team leave the Boston Celtics alone. They shouldn't be thinking about no adjustments, no movements, no nothing. Go out there and ball. Next, we got the Brooklyn Nets, who should be target targeting Mo Bamba. Um, interior defense is really tough. Nicholas Claxton's a good player, but he lacks in that aspect. Um, and they're saying Mo Bamba can help. And Mo Bamba kind of just existing over there in Orlando. Like, he'll start if they have some injuries or whatever. But, like, he kind of just there. And I was surprised he even resigned. Um, to Orlando just because they have so many different people that could be competing for his spot. And if he gets traded to Brooklyn, hey, this is not a lot. It's what? Nicholas Claxton and Dayron Sharp over there? You'll be all right. Um, so I would assume that his trade value is an all-time low. He will be a player that if I'm a rebuilding team or like a fringe team looking for front court depth, that's the, that's the guy I'm calling. I don't even know if he's going to be good for you. I just, I don't know. For his career, he's averaged 2.7 blocks per game and 11 rebounds per 36 and shoots 35% from three. Yep, never mind. I would I would try to call up Mo Bamba. And if I'm Mo Bamba's agent, I'm like, yeah, we might have tripped out by re-signing up or re-signing here. So let's try to figure out a way to get uh, back on track. Because right now they got Bo, they got Palo, they got Franz, they got Wendell. These are all seven-foot guys, bas basically, basically. You know what I'm saying? These are wings and people that can play a five position if you need them. Eh, you understand what I'm saying. Next, James Wiseman's value got to be an all-time low. I saw something on Twitter that said that even in the G League, James Wiseman has a negative on-off differential or negative um, point differential or something like that, which is obviously not very good for a former top three pick. Um, so his value is also at an all-time low, which puts it in a very weird spot if I am the Golden State Warriors. You never want to trade a player away when their value is at its lowest. But like, what options do we have? You know what I'm saying? He's obviously not ready to play NBA basketball. When we have put him on the court, the team has looked awful, and he just doesn't fit what we want to do as the Golden State Warriors. We don't want to keep giving this man um, G League minutes, right? And we don't want to bring him up just for him to sit on the bench if people question why he's not playing. It's a, it's a tough spot for James Wise. But if I'm the Charlotte Hornets, hell yeah. I'll buy in on James Wise, but I don't care that he ain't never had a positive, <laughs> a positive point differential in the G. If his value is at an all-time low, but he's still a former top three pick. Give me, give me two top three picks from that draft class in Charlotte, man. He is a guy, if I'm a rebuilding team, I'm definitely calling about. What does this trade look like? I think James Wise is making like $9 million a year. Is it P.J. Washington? If I'm the Golden State Warriors, I'm like, yeah, P.J. Washington is a good player. But do I want to trade away my former number two overall pick like two years after his NBA career started for P.J. Washington? Who I also got to, I got to sign P.J. Washington in a couple days, or a couple months basically i don't know man but i would target them if i'm the charlotte hornets for sure the bulls yaka Pertle, i mean that's if the bulls are deciding to continue to keep this core Jakob's a really good player um he's better than vucevic at this point in time so sure but if we put off a yaka Pertle trade that gave up other future assets i'd be kind of upset if i'm being honest with you 
Um, pending free agent, which is also never good. I like Jacoperto a lot, and I wouldn't be excited to watch him in a Bulls uniform, but it has to be perfect. Malik Beasley. Ooh. Okay. Malik Beasley kept for the Cavaliers adds another element to that bench. Obviously, Karis LeVert is very hit or miss. He was hit yesterday, which is dope. Their second unit is 25th in offensive efficiency. They could use some more juice. I can see that. Bogey to the, the Mavericks. Sure. Why not? Give Lucas some type of help that can also do a little uh, playmaking ball handling. We haven't seen Bogey play yet, so I'm very curious to what he's going to look like once he finally hits the court. I just don't know if I am the Atlanta Hawks. What do I want from the Mavericks to make a trade potentially? I'm sorry, some of these we're going to go through fast because I realized I was on number four and I was five minutes into the video. So some of these we're going to go through faster than others. Um, Matisse Steibel for the Denver Nuggets. Like this is, this is kind of a nothing trade to me. Uh, I, I know that their defense is one of the worst in basketball right now. And Matisse plays defense. Hey, if anybody's going to get Matisse to score 10 points per, it's going to be Jokic. Get Matisse cutting all over the place. Boom. Matisse Stiebel is like one of the best two, two way wings in, in ball. I doubt it though. Um, I highly doubt it. Detroit Pistons draft picks. Sure. Okay. Sure. I mean, that's kind of, if you ask me, it's kind of a cop out answer, Mr. Buckley. Because, sure, yeah, every, yeah, they should be looking for more draft capital. Um, and they got these two guys who they could potentially throw into a trade. I don't know if the Sadiq Bay rumors are real or not. I know for sure the Bojan Bogdanovich ones are. I know for sure. They signed him to extension, and he still can't get traded before the deadline. I will be surprised if Bojan Bogdanovich is still on the Detroit Pistons come February. We'll see. This makes more sense to me than Jakob going to the Bulls. The Golden State Warriors get him. And in this hypothetical, it probably is James Wise because Wise is making nine million dollars. I think Jakob is making like eleven or something, something around those lines. So that that would work. And then the Spurs get a young center to to see for an expiring contract. Now Jakob is a really good player, and there is still a world where they don't even sell Jakob and he resigns to this to the Spurs. But this is a cool timeline if I'm a Golden State Warriors fan, man. Jakob is a really really good NBA player. I think. He might get overlooked because he plays in San Antonio and they've been on a rebuild for the last season or so. But Jakob is really solid. The Houston Rockets, RJ Hampton. Whoa. Um, No comment. I mean, R R RJ is still relatively young, obviously. I just don't have an opinion about RJ because I haven't seen him enough. Sadiq Bey for the Indiana Pacers would be interesting. Um, But you just said that the Detroit Pacers should be looking for draft capital. I don't think the Indiana Pacers are giving up a pick to get Sadiq Bay, right? No way, right? No way. Sadiq Bay's what, 23 years old? Yeah, just 23 years old. I mean, obviously, he fits the timeline, if there even is a timeline. Him, Tyrese, and Benedict Matherin as the wings. I mean, you still got Chris Dorte somewhere. He's just injured right now. Um, I mean, I guess. I just don't see how you can make this happen. So the Clippers did say that they were looking for a center that can play when they're going against like a smaller lineup and, and Zoo's been really, really, really good for them, but obviously he has deficiencies and that's one of them. Like when you go against a team that's going small ball, everybody can ball handle, everybody can pass. It is a little bit rough for them. And they're saying that maybe PJ Washington can be that solution. The Lakers, Bradley Beal. I don't like it. I'm, just, I'm gonna say it right now. If I'm a Lakers fan, I would not like the idea of trading for Bradley Beal. Beal is a stud. Do not get me wrong. He is a stud. And right now, he can't miss two-pointers. He is a stud, stud, stud. But it's still... I think I made a video about this, talking about this rumor um, about a week or so. Maybe two weeks ago at this point. Where we're back to the point where it's just the big three. I think that the, the Lakers need more than just another star caliber player. And plus, the Beal contract scares me a ton. For like, if I'm the other 29 teams in, in basketball. You know what I'm saying? So, I just... I mean, fit-wise, I mean, yeah, Bradley Beal, a good good ball handler. He can play make. He can he get buckets with the best of them. But it's like, are we? I'm guessing this package is the Russell Westbrook in those two picks, and we end up with Bradley Beal, who will be here for f at least five more seasons. And five years from now, we're talking 2028. 20, so, like, he'll still be here for one of those picks conveys, and maybe we still a good NBA team because I just, I just don't love it. That's all. I just don't love it if I'm the Lakers. I don't know what the Lakers trade looks like that make me be like, yeah, that's the one. But I don't know if Bradley Beal is that. Miles Turner for the for the Grizzlies will be perfect. I think Miles Turner for the Pelicans. If the Pelicans don't have Miles Turner in their list, Zach Buckley will be bugging. Um, but Turner right now is playing the best basketball of his career. I think it's 18 points per game. Like, what, eight rebounds, the, leading the league in blocks. He's shooting 40-plus percent from three. 
he has been amazing and his value is at an all-time high so i mentioned this in my video last week about the pacers that they have a really tough decision to make on whether or not we want to extend him because he's just 26 years old we people act like he's hitting his 30s and he's about to pass his prime uh, usually 27 is where people hit their prime so he's not even in his prime just yet and the timeline seems like all over the place for the for the pacers because sometimes they're good or they've been really Pre decent this season let's just say they've been decent this season but then again you'll probably never see miles turner be this this valuable on the market and when you have a team like the grizzlies or you have a team like the pelicans or you have a team like the lakers who, who might be interested you might be able to get a nice package from miles and you might not be able to get that same package next season if you extend him and then decide ah it ain't really really about it um, but for the grizzlies i i really love the idea of him being on this roster bringing jay crowder back to heat nation wouldn't hate it would not hate it um they just need bodies they need competent nba bodies seems like they're always injured they run in the most zone in basketball by far and just because they don't have enough to like stay where they want to be um so jay crowd would definitely help that is there a world where the the boston Celtics trade peyton pritchard i've seen games this season we 20 some games to the season where peyton pritchard's come off the bench and give them the injury they needed to turn the game around you know what I'm saying? It happened in the Kings game, and it happened at least one more that I can think of, or I can't think of the exact opponent. And I know he's kind of, like, technically outside of the rotation, but, like, when he does get those minutes, he's really solid. This says with, with Smart, Malcolm Brogdon, and Derek White ahead of him in the backcourt pecking order, it's been nearly impossible for Pritchard to break through. Pritchard is 25, shooting 41%. On career from three, and oh yeah, doom, doom. He's valued just less value to Boston right now than any other team. I mean, I don't know. Joshua Sitt is an obtainable player for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, I'm excited to see what the Timberwolves look like. Um, I'm happy that Carl Anthony Towns' his injury is not not crazy, um, and he'll be back this season. But last night was a fun game for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'm like, yo, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards in that fourth quarter was some of the best basketball I've seen from him, and that's saying something, defensively, offensively. And now the game just looked better. Again, it was one game after Cat. We'll see what it continues to look like. Josh Richardson is an obtainable piece that they could add to their lineup. Kelly Olenek is playing some good basketball right now, but the Jazz gave up the most interior points in basketball last time I checked. So maybe he's not the best for the Pelicans, but I mean, I guess the Pelicans probably close out majority of their games come playoff time with like Larry Nance at the five. So Kelly... Olenna just opens up the floor more for Z to do his work, and he's been looking really good offensively and defensively. Actually, I don't hate this as much as I thought I would because um, I'm assuming that the cost for Kelly Olenek is not nothing crazy anyway, and the Pelicans still got like all of those picks from the Drew Holiday trade, so this is not terrible. Interesting. The Knicks are buying in on Robert Covington instead of selling on some of the things that they already have. Um, I was actually majority of the team's that are being mentioned right now are buying and not sell. I think the, the Pistons were the only team that they mentioned as kind of seller, sellers. See, even OKC Thunder are buying. Interesting. But what do they have that the Atlanta Hawks who are trying to win basketball games will be like, yeah, that's the that's the one. That's the one. I just, I'm trying to think. It's just saying a lot. But John Collins and OKC will be fun, I think. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say that's fun. It's just a matter of how the, the Atlanta Hawks see the assets that the thunder have like the thunder have a million first round picks so sure hey we gave up three to get Dejounte. maybe you give us one in the protect it for john but again that leaves the atlanta hawks with the hole in their lineup that that hasn't been filled you can give them kenny hustle sure but kenny hustle is like a really decent role play i don't know see they got a lot of the young players for the the warriors being sold when their value is not very high because moses moody doesn't really play like that um he's kind of just there so do I want to sell him if I'm the Warriors? When I've seen moments where Moses Moody's been really, really good. I don't know if I want to sell him right now to the Orlando Magic for what? Wh who's even over there that we can even give them that makes everything match? That's, that's why I don't like these Target um, articles more than like an actual trade. Because then we can start looking at this piece and this piece and this piece. The 76 get Eric Gordon. Just keep adding former or Rockets and former. I just, Sure. Um, the Suns also get Bogdanovich. Again, I think Bogdanovich is a really, really good underrated player. You, you always look at him and think about his NBA career and be like, oh, that's a 26-year-old. Nope. I think he's 30. I'm pretty sure Bogdanovich, Bogey Bogdanovich is 30, going on 31. You can't tell by the way he looks. And just like, he came over to the league a little bit later in his professional career. Um, but the, the Suns having another, again, same thing of what I said about, what, what team was it? Whoever was being mentioned, uh, the Dallas Mavericks, you could never have too many uh, playmakers, ball handles, catch and shoot guys, create their own guys. Bogdanovich is a little bit of everything, and that's why we like him over here. So 
um, in this hypothetical, this is like Jay Crowder ending up in the Atlanta Hawks uniform, and then Bogdanovich ends up here. And I would like those, that trade for pretty much both squads, I think. Um, speaking of Jay Crowder, Portland Trail Blazers potentially throwing their name into the hat. I think the Blazers have like a 2025 20, first round pick that they could still potentially throw in some trades. Um, I don't know if that's what the Suns would want. Again, the Suns are a competing team. They want people that could come in and, and fill some shoes immediately. So I don't know. Mo Bamba for the Sacramento Kings. I would take a shot. You know, I would take a shot. I would take a shot. I just don't know what the value is or what we give up to make it happen. But I would take a shot. Mo Bamba from the Kings. Uh, uh, you know, paint protector and all of that stuff. Draft picks for the Spurs. Sure. Um, Kobe White. What does a what does a Chicago Bulls Toronto Raptors trade look like to get Kobe White to them if they really wanted him? That's yeah. I mean, you you he's been really good. Um, he's been really good so far. He, he's been given defensive intensity, something I didn't expect from Kobe White. Love that. And he's been hitting some big shots down the stretch. I'm lo I'm liking Kobe White's season so far. Um, since he came back from his injuries and stuff, that quad injury. And then now we got the Utah Jazz for Jackson Hayes. Sure, an another one of those dudes is kind of lost in the rot rotation, lost in the shuffle on his roster. Man, Jackson Hayes showed us that he could be a, a highlight reel. Um, when he's playing the four last season, he had some really good moments. So. Don't hate that if I'm the Utah Jazz. Sell some of the, the legitimate pieces. Get back one of the younger dudes. And then the Kevin Durant trade. This is what I want to say. How? How? How do we do it? They talk about bringing them home. How? I don't know. You let me know who you think your favorite team should be targeting ahead of the deadline. Um, and I'll be in that comment section. And hopefully they, they put together an article where trades are actually real.